Oh yeah, it's the big boy. It's the Bigfoot five by ten and sixteen of the best players on the planet all competing to be this year's champion. We're in round one, and let me ask Derby City, are you ready for some great pool? We've seen it so far, and I'm sure this match is going to be no different. First up, he is a U.S. Open champion, Banks and One Pocket Derby City champion, and 11-time Moscone Cup for Team USA. He's sponsored by Pure Bread Hustlin', Muchi Cool Excuse, and School of Pool. Make some noise for the Prince of Pool, Corey Duell. And his opponent... He is a three-time champion at Predator Pro Billiards, eight-ball world champion runner-up, sponsored by Predator and Book Game. From Pose 9, Poland, make some noise for Victor Zielinski. They're lagging for the break. Our referee, it's Ricky Bryant, sending it up to the skybox, Jeremy Jones and Mark Wilson. We're high atop the Yakistats Arena here at the Derby City Classic. Jeremy Jones and Mark Wilson here with you enjoying the 10-ball action. Jeremy uh, Zelensky certainly been hot, upcoming, finishing high in a lot of majors. Haven't heard much from Corey Duell lately. Yeah, I mean, last year he kind of didn't play many events. Had some nice matches at the U.S. Open. Um, kind of towards the end of 2022, I think he started to not play as much, and 23 was really light. Hopefully we'll see him back out here in 24 quite, quite only a bit four, more. He's only 46 years old. I oh, mean, there's yeah. still plenty of upside there. Uh, though, he's kind of like the mad scientist, and t uh, tonight we'll be seeing him break with the bridge, possibly, which is absolutely bizarre. Yep, here we go. This is uh, not the first time I've seen him do it, but it's the first time in the major I've seen him do it. He practices like this. He hits them very squarely with the bridge. <laughs> it's remarkable. He does rain balls in this way. Yeah, I, want, I guess just the stability makes him stay a little more st stable. I don't know the real benefit, but I'd love to know what he thinks about it. Yeah. He's... I think it's just more s keeping him down and steady through, right? The mad scientist, he's always doing something that's yeah, peculiar. You're in a weaker position, right? And the thing like right there, he hits spin, so you could see how light the rack opened. And right. if he doesn't hit it just right, i got to believe it's it's going to be tough to get a lot of results, but we'll see. Well, it sort of sharks your opponent. And, uh, it, you know, I mean, so you pick up a shot or two also because it's so distracting that someone would even try to play a pro match that way. But... Uh, you don't get to be Corey Duel for nothing. Looks like he did a pretty good job. Not maybe perfect, but I don't think Corey can shoot straight at the one, although looking like he maybe he can swerve it around the two. Now he's looking over at the side rails if he wants to kick. Yeah, nice high ball kick here. If he hits the full, you know, continue downward with the cue ball like we talked about. Some way or some good fashion. Job. Yeah, good job. Now, Corey is a crafty veteran player. I can remember when him and Alex Pagulian used to run around the country, and they were, I don't even think they were 21. They were kind of like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Nobody could beat them. Do we expect this to be a little longer match? I mean, especially seeing the break shot, the opening one from Corey, if it continues with the bridge. I think you're going to see a little more difficult layouts and maybe not so many shots on the one, but also Zelensky, who I haven't seen on the 10-footer much. Got a high gear, though, Zelensky, so. Doesn't want a little nick here. Well, you got it behind the five, nice. We're going to see a, boy, I don't know what he's got here. If he's going to try to kick three rails, he's going to have to warp it uh, with backspin to shorten it. I think two rails. Just, uh, oh, two rails? Uh -huh. Side rail, end rail. You hit underneath, it's okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Come across it, it's not bad. I think just two. Now, this is the one the players don't realize on the slick table. It doesn't take the right English off the second rail so much, so you got to kick downward a little bit. 
That one was beautiful. Yeah. Really nice speed coming across it. Well played. This is a race to 10 games. No jump cues. 10 ball does not win on the break. Yeah, and the difference, of course, another one is no call shot. So some of our fans who wasn't around for old school 10 ball, what we were playing pretty much here, may have think that 10 ball was kind of made for a call shot, and that's not the case. All right, can go two rails, probably just one, though. No reason to go two, but little preference. Oh, he's going to end up pretty short here. And that's the thing about coming to is the speed because you're worried about the seven when you come two rails. When you come one rail, the seven's not really in play. You just get a little above the head string and you're, and you're good. He may use the seven ball here. It's thin enough with a little bit of left. Maybe he can go into the seven heavy and slow. No, he's banking. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I thought it was cuttable. Do understand the argument on the bank, though. I think uh, Zelensky's got to probably take a little longer shot on the five here, unless he plans on going into the seven with the cue ball. It's not going to offer a ton of side spin on this type of shot. Always when I think of Zelensky's game, I always think of like a shot maker more than a tactician. Yeah, I mean, it's. I think he fools us sometimes because his position is pretty solid. Now he's a young mm -hmm. player, so of course the game's so vast it takes time to learn it all. But, um, yeah, I think the way he gets around the table, and I don't want to say this in a bad way, but some like nonchalant at times, and just kind of makes you think he isn't thinking position, but he really is. Mm -hmm. But also some other characteristics. So like when he gets down on the ball. He has the cue moving pretty quickly. Yeah. You know, it's another thing. It's a little different than some. You see it just even yep. before the bridge settles, right? Yep. So that kind of makes you think, you know, without thinking about it, oh, maybe he's not a thinker as much as a, just a young kid that knocks him in. So. And far less experienced than what he actually is. He, yeah. he, he looks, you know, he plays great, but he doesn't look. He looks more amateurish. Yeah. Very yeah, so square shoulders at the shot. Fool you a little bit, I guess. And Oh, yeah. But the youngest player, I believe, ever to win a Euro Tour at 15 years old. He's only 22 now. Yeah. Well, that's some feat. You know, that was right in the heart of the Euro Tour. Now the fields have fallen off as far as the top players here in the last couple of years. But but uh, when he won it, uh, pretty much every one of them was playing. I'm curious now, why do you think the fields have fallen off in that? Because it seems like pool, you know, I mean, when you look at, like, Poland and stuff, I mean, it's just... No, they don't exploding. pay real well. Uh, I see. You know, yeah. and there's a lot of sponsorship dollars. There's a lot of other events around the world. And, you know, some of the politics going on with that, which I don't have to talk about, but that's tied in with, with one, one, one of those groups quite heavily, so... But it's not terrible or anything. Don't get me wrong. You still got to play real well to win. Oh, but but yeah. you're just not getting every one of the top players that normally play. 1-0 now. Nice run out there. Victor Zelensky spells that with a W-I-K-T-O-R. But there is no W sound, so it's Victor. And you would think the way he plays, he's a lot of, I mean, he plays all kinds of shape, but he'll he'll choose the one rail a lot, which I think sets up for the 10-footer sometimes. Uh, his, his height, of course, can't hurt. Yeah. Um, and he, he knocks balls in. So, I mean, it really kind of sets up for this table. The International Open is ostensibly a world championship because it has all the same players there, and he's had two deep runs the last two years, uh, top four. Type yeah. finishes, uh, super impressive. And he's still one that's dealing with, you know, our ref will tell him quickly about the cue ball being entirely behind the line. Yeah, that's the rule this year. Yeah, so that way there's no question mark. That's a beautiful rule, really. Um, but one thing he dealt with a little bit, too, is mental, which all of us do as a young player. Um, 
you know, some frustration and, and let a few things get to him at times. But he's coming along with that. And a little bit of that sometimes is that you want to make a name for yourself and you feel the heat to hang with the big dogs here. And so you think by expressing it, it's like ego defense. Like, normally I'm better than this, but yeah. the reality is the pool is hard. And the will to win, wanting to win. I mean, and then you learn as a young player that, hey, I need to reserve some of that energy, mm -hmm. maybe not ever get negative as much as possible, and, and, and so on. Um, it's almost like it's very rare that you have a player that starts out as a slow player. Almost every player is a faster at first, mm -hmm. especially if they start somewhat young. Mm -hmm. And then you have to go through those, you know, growing pains right. and whatnot. So. Right. Yeah, you know, it wasn't Mark Patience Wilson when he was 18, <laughs> just so you know. It, it wasn't? You <laughs> no, said, oh, well. no, I'd want to smash my cue yeah, and get yeah. mad. I mean, you would never think of it, but I was so passionate about it, and I wanted it so fast, but I, you can't have it fast. Pool's art. Beautiful what a nice hit. shot. Beautiful Well hit. designed, yeah. He's going to maybe get a little reward. Definitely left some distance. I don't know if the four is in play here. Yeah, I had a, I had a few cues, uh, you know, turn into keychains uh, back in the day. I remember one specifically. Uh, just the pin. <laughs> and I drilled a hole. Actually, a friend of mine drilled a hole. Made a little keychain to remind myself. Corey hit that pretty heavy. Yeah, I think he knew it was a kiss. Corey is a very savvy one-pocket player and recognizes he just was hoping the kiss would work out a little bit just because he didn't have much of anything else. I tell you, talking about broken cues, naturally Strickland probably the all-time leader, but right there with him, Jeff Carter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he get a hot hit. Sometimes Jeff would get mad, and it would be down to just splinters, like you said. The best one of all time, however, was I was in the pool room. The guy lost the match. He went and shook the guy's hand. He very quietly put the cue over his knee, broke it calmly, and then opened his case and put it in the case. Uh -huh. So that was my favorite one of all time. There was no uh, viciousness to it whatsoever like you normally see. <laughs> wow, ball in hand here is... Interesting shot he had on the one mark. He tried to roll between. He could have come to the top side of the table from our view going around the 10. The four wasn't there and had a real open look at the two. Figured not to get snookered, but it did cost him. Okay, I like rolling this in the side more myself, especially a little critical to get right on the three to get to the four. I just always feel like I'm better with, uh, with mm -hmm. going forward on the cue ball. Now he may have gotten tricky. I don't know. Can he get to the top rail? Yeah, he can. But like just what you said, no. Uh, well, I think he can come around there pretty smooth. I don't think it's as bad as we fear. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh -oh. going right in the side. No trouble. Trouble, yeah. trouble, trouble. And that was from the ball and hand shot. Yeah. Uh, you know, just in these opening few balls here, Corey does not look sharp. He doesn't look like he's focused on this. He's just kind of going through the motions of this. Where, uh, and Zelensky, quite the opposite. He's on point. He hasn't made everything perfect yet, but you can see he's hungry. Yeah, again right here, drawing instead of following it. And the thing about the follow is you never miscue. I know it's just a, a small element of things, but just like right there, it was a little lighter than he wanted. He might have miscued. He's looking at his tip. So just what you said, he could have come around and played it the other way and had zero chance of this happening. And the cue ball be in a better position, absolutely. Well, on the rail here, and like on the 5 by 10 I'm telling you, this extracts a toll in terms of your accuracy. you got to be good on this. Well, you know, maybe not, but sometimes it's going to have to work a little harder from the 6 to the 7 because of that ball and hand shot. So, And when you talk about a long set, the ex the uh, expense of the extra focus required at the end of the match, and it's 9-9, nine, nine, it takes a toll. It's like body blows in boxing. You don't yeah. necessarily see it right away. You see it towards the end of the fight. Yeah, which, you know, you talk about a set. The set is long-term period, you know, whether it's this match and it carries over the next match, and, you know, just right. just making things as, as good as possible. Now he's falling straight on this, so he was on the rail. So two out of three balls, he had to have good position. The other one, he had to make a hard shot. Okay, just a light stun. Doesn't need really anything out of the cue ball, but wouldn't mind an inch or two. Could drag it. Stunned it forward a ball's width.
All right, gunslinger here, 2-0 in front of Corey Duell. We get another look at the old uh, bridge break. Well, at least one or two more. I don't know if, it, if we'll see how it goes. He may abandon that shortly. Oh, boy. Corey's going to try to win with guile and experience. The other guy's going to try to shoot the balls in the hole, you know. <laughs> Interesting dynamic here. Well, and that's the thing, you know. The tougher the players, of course, very tough equipment. You know, you can't, you can't try to, you know, make the game that much easier on yourself beyond just playing smart position and whatnot. You still have to just execute and keep executing mm -hmm. and, and understand that's how the game's played. And, you know, Corey, it, so smart, sometimes it gets the best of all of us trying to make something easy. We talked about yeah. John Schmidt earlier with that record he was trying to break a few years ago. and um, But we're going to get to see the bridge one more time. That's for sure. <laughs> I like the way he wraps it around his arm. I mean, he clearly very experienced at doing this. I watched him in the finals of a big tournament one time when he was considering getting, uh, he was going to get the points to be picked on the Moscone Cup. And I'm watching him online. He doesn't even know I'm watching him. I'm like, what in the world is he doing? In the finals of a 10-ball tournament at Capone's, playing a good player. And he beat the guy. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I don't recall who it was. Well, I can't imagine him hitting him much better than he just did right there, and it was dry. Yeah. So, And, of course, we've seen dry breaks all day, so, you know, when guys aren't using the bridge. So, so that's neither here nor there, but I know he can break him without the bridge. I know that. You know, the other part is uh, Corey is clearly the most non-conforming guy in a group of non-conformists. I right. mean, he's always a renegade in whatever it is that you're doing. I know, but you still have to take take a little look at what everyone else is doing and how it's working, <laughs> you know? so You would think. You would yeah. think. Yeah, not Corey. He questions everything. No, I, I get it. <laughs> he's been to my house a few times, Corey Duell. Well, the funniest thing to me is a few years ago they were playing a 10-ball tournament and they were playing uh, where the 10 counted on the break. And so I got to the tournament. Of course, I'm commentating. And uh, so I'm watching all these champions just practice it. Um, and we're playing on new tables no one had ever played on, okay? Mm -hmm. So they're all practicing, practicing, practicing. Now, Corey's got his own table over there, and I watch him. <laughs> And he literally practiced breaking, trying to figure out how to make the 10 on the break for about five hours. Oh, yeah. and, and I said, uh, I walked over, I said, uh, Corey, what are you doing? He's like, man, I'm figuring out this break for this 10, you know, the 10 counts. And I said, do you see what all these other guys are doing over here? <laughs> They're practicing running out. So and he's like, he looked at me like they were all suckers. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a funny thing to me, you know, me he and Corey, always, we can always pick at each other a little bit. But He, he is a scoundrel of the highest order, a lovable rogue. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've had him, you know, stay at my home. But yet tonight, if he could beat me out of 200, he'd do it. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. he's just, that's how he has to go. But I don't mind because I know how he is. And I truly love him and admire him and, and have some empathy for him, too. He's kind of had to scramble by, so. But, yeah, absolutely. He's uh, he's kept himself a really nice, good guy through uh, some tough times, so. Good sense of humor with him. and uh, But a contrarian. Uh, whatever you say, if you say this table's blue, well, it's not really quite blue. You know, whatever are it is. You, are you sure it's blue? Yeah. <laughs> so. But again, that a lot of those traits are what made him so great. Mm -hmm. All right, a little off angle, may have to go forward. Could just draw back on the opposite side of the 10 to play it in the same pocket as the 9. Really effortless swing from the big man. I'll tell you something he did that was the most interesting thing to me because of just how he is. He was with me at Lindawood. And so uh, I get this phone call, and in St. Louis, there's no bigger money than Anheuser-Busch. Well, Billy Bush is one of the sons, and, you know, billions of dollars we're talking about. So I get the phone call from his secretary. Hey, Mark, you're a pro player. Billy's making a beer commercial tomorrow, and uh, he just needs you to come down. We're going to pay you and everything. But you just, we just want you to let him. We're going to film you, but we're going to make it look like it was him shooting the shot. We just want you to break and make seven stripes on the break a couple times. <laughs> Is that all? And I said, oh, uh, well, you know, I could set up some shots and he'll look great, you know, but I've never made seven stripes in my 50 years, you know, or yeah. anything. 
And they go, oh, no, no, she, she does no pool. She just assumes that that's just doable. So I tell Corey afterwards, he goes to work on the table and starts jigging the rack and getting gaps and stuff. Oh, five hours later, he made seven stripes on a non-legitimate rack. But if you just pan the camera, it does yeah. look like it's a rack. Yeah, yeah. Only Corey Duell would spend the time wow. for something that's nothing. But he, and then when I had I'd to be able to do, do it, it too on a crappy bar table, you need good Simonis to do this because all the fits and the timing's got to be right, and you need really good tables. But I, uh, on the bar table that I had to do it on, I did make six stripes and a solid one time. Oh, wow! And five stripes uh, almost every time. But that's I would have never figured. I would have never taken had the patience to. And what's the what's the point, you know? But, yeah. Oh, he loves it. He well, loves that type of thing. Well, he obviously had a little inclination he could get it done, of course, with all his knowledge of the rack. Now, if he was a bank player, he could stiff this right in on the diamond, no problem. Maybe he can get at it straight. I think he thinks he can oh, cut okay. it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I saw him shaking his head, so I didn't know if he, he really had a shot. Boy, if he gets out from this break, that will be maximum taxation on the uh, bridge break uh, dry thing. Yeah, and we'll see how long he goes with it, that being core duel. All right. Just trying to get a little natural one rail angle to kind of spread the cue ball with a little right spin. Now here he wants to be, you know, and a real good line on the five to play the six up long. You don't want to fall behind this at all and don't want to get steep from, from above. This looks perfect or really good. Yes, very nice shot there. And he got it a bit closer because he had a light stun in there to come off the four with the right spin, or the three rather, sorry. Anytime you fall on the wrong angle on this five, man, getting out from there with the six over there is murder. And he fell on it perfect. Yeah, he may have to just stop here. I don't know. Is he going towards the point point to where he yeah. might hit the point and get funny on the seven? Looks like it from here on the overhead. Yeah, you don't want to get funny. You'd rather take the guaranteed angle. Oh, he's comfortable, I'll tell you. Yeah, he's stunned with inside to get that. He created that angle. That wasn't there. Nice well, shot. Yeah, and he secured going to the rail quickly, uh, which was real nice. A lot of times what I was saying about stop, just stop and take the guaranteed angle on the seven. That way you can track the cue ball easily up and down the table. And your cue ball's off the cushion, so it yeah. plays easier. Yeah. But he had a nice shot there, a, kind of a delicate little thing. And you can look at him looking at three ways on the eight. So really looking to get out here, but like you said, a bit more focused than maybe his opponent. I don't know about falling behind this that much. Uh, this is a little awkward. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he can, you know, low draw he's real good at. That long arc, he should be able to pinch it by the 10. Oh, he's going into, into the 10. 10. Okay. Yeah, nice. Yeah, well executed. Yeah, this is, looks pretty natural to get two rails back somewhat where the cue ball's at now. He might be able to draw up around the 10 and you just play the 10 in the same he, pocket. Because he's so right? close to it, you mean? Maybe not. No. Two oh, rails. he came above it. Okay, nice shot. So it was clearly thinner because he didn't even have to hit that very hard. I'll tell you, the first and the last games, of course, the hardest to get, and that is true. And Corey Dool looking for that first one. Breaking run out here. So that was two games from the dry break by Corey Dool. Corey Dool. You have to place the balls randomly, not the two and the three in the corners that many players are familiar with. It's not call shot. Ricky Bryant doing a great job here on the uh, referee duties here from a long day. Began today at 1, 1 p.m. Yeah, I see one of the definitely favorites in the banks. Back teeing it off in a match. Billy Thorpe, whose game is coming right along. Really has played well early this year from what I hear. Played well at the rail yard before this in the mini derby. Amazing how much talent's in the room, Mark. Mm -hmm. I mean, really. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're really only missing a handful of the uh, Chinese players. Yeah, and I expected, you know, a little more. Of course, some are playing the Chinese eight ball, so they have a bit more of a schedule on that this year, I think. You know, going right back to the old bridge. 
and again, I just don't see how he could hit him any better than he did. And this is the other thing. He can't really hit him much harder than he did last. He's going to lose control. So where's the improvement from this position besides maybe changing the cue ball into a different place? But, uh, but I think that's harder for him. Oh, that's more of what he wanted. But he did hit him a little harder, Mark. Got a little more into it. <laughs> okay. Lovely turnout here. Yeah, this is... Uh, this one dressed up nice. All the balls, so the six, seven grouped together, the one, three, five to get started right there. Or excuse me, the one, two, three, five. And you're looking at a guy. We talked about it earlier, a guy that uses that brain a lot. To, ooh, he may get on top of this. He's okay. But one of the best position players, really. I mm -hmm. think Corey Duell, very, very smart position player, very efficient. And he likes it slick, by the way. He doesn't like it when his opponent can just check the cue ball with spin and yeah. be able to get back in line like that. So, One of the things I'll never forget that I totally admire of Corey Duell is that when he was oh, 18, 19, and Ephraim was his peak prowess, every tournament we went to, Ephraim was there. Corey played him 100 rack rotation straight up. It wasn't anybody else asking Efren to play. And, and Corey just paid his dues and learned and because he wanted to get some of that stuff that Efren has with the tricky shots and billiards yeah. aspects. And I really admire and respect. And, and Corey worked himself in to be, you know, absolutely top tier. It's been a little while since he's been top tier, but he did win a U.S. Open. Absolutely. Goose egged Mika Eminen in the final, actually. 11-0 with the soft break. Uh-oh. Okay, the 10 didn't cover up the 9, but that could have been problems. Well, it is, it psychologically, it's totally damaging. When you, when you miss your position play, where you just bludgeon into a ball from the middle of the table that you weren't even planning on hitting, it doesn't do anything for your confidence. Nice stroke there and great was. recovery. Yeah, I used to play Efren quite a bit of one pocket, uh, actually. I didn't play him in the rotation, but we tangled quite a bit. But I remember watching Corey play Efren so many times a rotation. I just have supreme respect for somebody that would get in there and tangle with a lion like that. And well, you don't get to be the great Corey Duel if you're afraid to play somebody. Well, nice break and run out there from the bridge. Let's keep the bridge going, then Corey Duell. That's his first break and run out of the match. Gets him on the board, four to one behind. <laughs> He's explained to the crowd. There on the sidelines, there's uh, Miesko and uh, Conrad, and the Polish countryman of Victor Zelensky. Something I've really enjoyed seeing. This is the first day of the Derby, but how many of my U.S. team billiards players are here playing and supporting this? But I would say probably a contingency from my group of at least 15 players. And that's all St. Louis area? Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. So pool's, pool's thriving? No, we're building. Okay. And that's what makes me so happy is all the effort I put towards this has now we're starting to see a small dividend. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of them that are here that are not playing, but most of them are playing in the event. Some of them are just here watching. But So you start bringing, if everybody could bring 15 or 20 people to these things. Yeah. We'd have an event here. Yeah. You know? And so is that like a group that plays all over St. Louis? Or? We play in the region. We play Peoria, Springfield, Illinois, and St. Louis area okay. right now. And different pool rooms, I'm assuming? Yeah, well, we only have three pool or four pool rooms. So uh, In St. Louis, really? Yeah, so sad. There's only two in St. Louis. We have one in Springfield and one in Peoria that's real good. Wow. Everything else is closed up. We used to have a so bunch So how far of is Peoria and all that? That's got to be a little bit of a drive, right? Two and a half hours yeah. at least. You know, maybe a little bit more, so... 
I but there. there's just nowhere to play, and I'm trying to build the sport up. And so we, but we get practices in and stuff. It's pretty sophisticated what we got going on. It's kind of like think of minor league baseball. Yeah. You know, we're better than high school and college, uh, uh, better than you know uh, handicap leagues and regional tournament handicap things. There is no handicap in it, but we you sort of self handicaps because you're in the group that you belong in. Done. All right, so it's competitive. Yeah. And it's, it's done by you. There's no handicap. It's just whatever your power ranking is, you earned it. So all right. that's Tr the group you're in. Tricky rack here all of a sudden if you fail straight because, you know, you can get at the 7, but you don't want a ton of angle on the 7 because you got to hold for the 8. I don't think he can get in position to get the cue ball where it's at now on the 7 uh, after mm -hmm. shooting the 6. You know, that doesn't look like much of an option from where he's at on the 4, so... He may need to play two cushions across and just take a long, longer, thin cut on the seven, but not on that side where he's at now because it's, you have to negotiate the eight ball, but coming across to play it in the far corner. Yeah, I think he's going to try and get on the line he's on now on the seven and be able to just kill the cue ball. He's got that nice kill stroke. Can take good speak. Oh, he was able. Oh, yeah. smart. Two cushions. Yeah, mm -hmm. much more controllable, but still a big shot coming. Yeah, you can rub that in the eight ball here and get in trouble in a hurry. Well, if you use, like, the draw stroke that, like, John Schmidt was real good at, killing the ball from these angles with just straight draw, yeah. really letting the second rail, you know, yeah. kind of flatten it out a little bit, that's a touchy shot because if you off a little bit, it just zings on you and you have and, no position on the eight. So. And then you want to avoid the eight, so you tend to miss this heavy because you're trying to help the cue ball. You know what I mean? Nah, yeah, a, you're yeah. trying to help the cue you, ball movement. You know where to aim. Non-movement, rather. <laughs> right, you're trying to take the pace out of it avoid the eight and then you end up missing the heavy well that's why you got to learn to play a rolling stroke here with right english to eat up the cue ball or a drag with right english oh wow look at here look he's at gonna catch shot. the nine look at that shot you don't see that played very often but i guess that's all he had well it, it really hit it clean it had plenty mm -hmm. of pace to get back for the eight so well you can see why this kid's a threat to go deep for sure well, what I'm watching is just his facial expressions because I've watched him a ton. And uh, he seems like he's worked on his mental game. And the thing is, you don't have to sit there and work like, you know, uh, you know, do yoga you know, or, or, or mentally, you know, train. Mm -hmm. You just have to be aware of what not to do. And then once you start to get engaged mm -hmm. in the game, everything kind of takes care of itself. So Yeah. Okay, does he... You know, is he worried about edging this so he may kick behind it? But then the, there's also a scratch if he kicked the lower hemisphere, yeah. too, you know. So, well, he had more ball to hit than we thought. How'd he do? He's going to leave a shot. But that's the right shot, trying to yeah. combine the 10, put oh. the 8 out in space. So, Well, this is a big-time shot here. Yeah, he can't really run off the 8. He could. But the eight's going to go into the nine, it looks like, instead of, you know, go to the side rail and to the in rail. So I think he goes for this. Jack up. He'll try and play the cue ball underneath the nine. Maybe backdoor safety if the eight gets around table. Good job with the cue ball. And rail to end rail. This is how you start a lot of pro innings right here from this ugly spot. I lost a fortune because I'd go for everything, and the other guys were leaving me this, and you can imagine how my matches turned out. I'm, I know I'm shooting the straight as they are, but I'm losing 11 to 5. Can't figure it out. But this is why. They left me this, and I was leaving them straight in the side too often. Once I figured this out, though, then I started winning yeah, a few. Things got better. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did. I noticed my results got a lot better. Yeah, I think Corey's trying to see if he can get at the bank, maybe, or full contact on the eight instead of just having to, you know, work mm -hmm. with the right side. Wow, he's not. Now, this isn't the right shot, even though Efren, I've seen him do it a lot of times. But here, he does have options. I mean, there are a few options here. He has about half the eight ball. Oh, what well, a you're great hit it that shot. Good. What a great shot. Going to hit it that great good. Great shot. Fantastic. Corey Duell. <laughs> he made it look so effortless, so, you know, it looks like the balls want to go that way, but they don't. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, I was probably wrong there as far as just thinking about the shot and what he was thinking about versus is me executing clipping the eight versus me executing the kick, you know. Mm -hmm. So, 
Trying to stiff this bank in. No, he's going to try and play behind the nine. No jump cues. Very he effective. did pretty darn good there. Yeah, and you don't ever try to come on the nine. That's the difference in, you know, yesteryear's game versus today. You have to kind of maybe get him on the nine because the eight's going to be near the pocket. Mm -hmm. With no jump cues, much different story. Is Corey Massaying? No, he's no? going to kick at it. He's, oh, he's, okay, he's I going to I think he's direction. kicking one rail, though, not two. Oh, he's going two. Oh, wow. Now here you see uh, referee Ricky Bryant. He will polish up the cue ball, and he will set it on the table so as to never allow uh, the opportunity for him to be involved in a potential yeah, foul. Yeah, a fumble. Right. All right, just pull this up the side rail. Just creep it past the side. It'll get there. You don't have to put a lot. Yeah. One rail again, could go two. And this is all a lot of preference. He can cue the ball nicely. Can't really fault either shot. He hits that slightly elevated stun one railer uh, quite a bit when I watch him play. Well, you, one thing that I see in today's game is it's all about the light stun. Really, the heavy stun is a shot that just doesn't come up that much. It's more about the light stun that keeps you in control and lets the cue ball release nicely, mm -hmm. holds the line real well, and you don't miss much. Getting out of hand here a little bit for Corey at 5-1. to one. Hopefully he can return with a break and run. Did you play in the first Derby City Classic? No, I. Uh, that's the first, the only one I missed for some time, about eight or ten years worth. Ninety-nine was a very busy schedule for me that year, and uh, I'd started to really do a lot better on the tour, and I really focused on a lot of practice and really just certain tournaments. You know, I just didn't realize the Derby was going to be the Derby. Uh, well, it wasn't know. back then. Yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. But who it was, knew what it right. was, you know. It worked into this, but it was, yeah. it was just kind of a hodgepodge. It was a very odd tournament because it was more of a festival, really. It was races to seven, nine yeah. ball. And well, I'd moved to Jacksonville, Florida, where I knew absolutely no one. And I told myself that I was going to really practice, you know, get back to, like, series regimen. Uh huh. So I didn't go to a tournament till the first Camel Tour event of that year, which was early April in, in Olathe, Kansas. That's the one that I don't like, the weak one that, where he miss hit the cue ball with English, you know, and it's just never really going to get much of a result, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't play anything competitive for like uh, six months, uh, five months. Trying to change my regimen a little bit. And it helped a ton, I'll tell you. I was always someone that practiced, but once I really scheduled it, it was much different. Hard to tie something up while playing the rollout here. Something you kind of look for if it's doable and simple. Not an easy shot to push out to here. No, and I wonder if he can use, like, the right side of the seven, you know, as a little bit of a guide on the speed and the line. That way he doesn't sell out a cut on the one. You know, you don't want to sell out a cut on the one, so you want to use something to make sure you're just giving up a portion of the one, which is pretty important. Now, he left all the one, but not the cut. He didn't leave the extreme left side, I don't think, anyways. Definitely can't pass this. Maybe a gap here. Okay, it didn't hit the nine. I like this. Got a lot of action with the four there. Mm -hmm. He's got to bend it, maybe with a little speed. But that's just straighten out the line and give him a nice contact on the one. 
Oh, wow. Didn't take. Okay, Corey's earned ball in hand now. Shoot the one, just roll forward. Play a natural one rail to shoot the two and the three in the same corner with the four hanging over the side. And really a pretty easy out overall. Now it's demanding because it's the it's the ten footer, of course, but but as far as the route of everything, it's not bad. the transition there and almost overcut it. Fine now just to chip this in, play the five in the side. Looks like he did pretty good there. I think he could just top spin it and come out one rail. I think so. He can broaden it a little bit. Doesn't have to use a ton of inside. Just kind of broaden the angle there a little to get the cut. Now here, he's just, if he's going to kill it with inside or something, just make sure you're not goofy and going to have a goofy stretch oh, trying to get to the seven. You know? That's a serious concern on the 10-footer versus the 9-footer, being mindful about the stretch. Yeah. Well, he's going to have to use the bridge now. Yeah, he didn't kill the rock on the side rail. He actually hit it with inside. I thought if he was going to do that, maybe float it with outside. Now we could hit it thicker, but this shouldn't be a problem with the bridge for Corey Duell. This is another way you can use the bridge right here. Yeah. If you don't want to just use it on the break, you can do it for this. He's hitting a high ball? Wow. Caught it just a little bit rail first, it looked like, because of how it kind of lost its pace coming out of there and all that twirl on there. Yeah, and you would think maybe he wouldn't play for the rail first, maybe? I don't know. No, I don't think so. I think I he just squared so, a little yeah. more than he anticipated. Good stroke there. And 5-2 is our score. Right here in the center, uh, right behind the uh, shot clock here is two of my U.S. team Billiards player, John Schneider and Kent Kaiser. Kent is down here in the red. You get a kick out of him. He was a triple-A baseball player for the Phillies, and he played with Darren Dalton, Lenny Dykstra, and, and was ahead of them on the chart and uh, blew out his arm or something. Mm. Didn't make it, but, you know. Playing with the big boys in there, at the L, he can tell you some interesting stories of their times coming through the minors to get yeah, to that. Extra, what a crazy guy! Yeah. I remember him with the Mets. He said he was a phenomenal talent. That was a little tiny short guy, you know, but just strong and mm -hmm. hit the ball with power. All right, five twos our score. One's going to track down, and I think the six is a little funny. I don't know if the nine has gotten in the way. So some work there for sure. A little work for our referee at the moment. <laughs>
needs to go a little bit. I think he just got there. Yeah, he caught that one. Really a chip shot, very thick to the pocket. Really wondering how he's going to play the six. Uh, could just get to the center and cut it to the pocket he's standing in. Standing Ooh. over. Backside's got a lot of options. If he feels like he could get on the five right to you know, track the cue ball back underneath the six. Maybe just draw one rail here and not get too much angled. Yeah, this is going to hurt. He's going to have a long stretch from here. He needs the bridge. Yeah. Let's say a cue ball gets on the other side of the side pockets for a right-hander on this type thing. You're going to need the bridge for sure. Yeah, well, now I don't think he tries to get on the back side. I think that's originally where he was going. So now just come out to the center and evaluate if you want to take on the cut, I think. Little, little on the left side of the center. Ooh, he got a lot out of that. He's not going to get the pocket he wants on the sixth, but maybe a safety. Hmm. Huh. I don't see much for safety here. Yeah, it's pretty treacherous. He can maybe add a hair of spin onto this and get it by the eight and just kind of hold the ball there and use a big seven as the six goes across to the long rail past the side. But phew, I tell you, I'm right on the line. It's, it's really close. Yeah, he's trying to get just a pinch of left here. He hit the eight. Yeah, he caught the eight, hoping for a roll. That that tells me he's a little cut off here. He's going to have to thin this, maybe. Maybe the side's in the way. But he can't get to the left side of the six here, so. Nice. Nice shot. Now well, Zelensky going to have to kick at this and hope he's going two cushions. This is the one that's very missable on new cloth. Yeah. It's always very the second missable. rail. It doesn't take that left spin like you imagine. On broken cloth, he hits it all day doing that. On brand new cloth, even the elite pros, when it's out that far, they can miss it by six inches. It's, it, the angle going in, like you said, it doesn't take the spin. It doesn't hold the spin or something. But the, It's almost always the same side, though, to me, Mark, that they miss it on and I kind of feel like you would, you know, gather that in and realize that, the, like I said, the second rail just doesn't take that left spin. And it's always uh, looks like they really had the wrong line on the ball, which is essentially true, but mm -hmm. but just not much of an uh, adjustment. Got a little straight. It's got to force it a little bit, not much. That was something that we worked on heavily when I was the captain of the Moscone Cup was a slippery two-cushion one because that's what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And as it turned out, we would have hit the shot good, but we didn't. We, we lost before that came up. So yeah, right. <laughs> we were good at that, but we didn't. We didn't stand in there too long. All right, cut cut it to two games and breaking the balls in the next. All from that ultra thin safety, and forcing the issue here, forcing the kick, and and something happen. The Good game there, Corey. Duel five three is our Here's score. Five games to three now. The Diamond Bigfoot ten ball challenge will continue round one again tomorrow, starting at one. Most people know this, but I'll tell you, the ten ball ten foot table is my very favorite event, and I like it all. Seven o'clock, Shane Van Boney and Lee Van Corteza. Likely Tuesday night, we'll be doing the bank pool finals. And there'll be one pocket for a few days. Then we're going to have some nine ball action Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday.
<clears throat> Alan Oliver tuned in. My old Linda Wood buddy. You know, the the nine ball event here is a Moscone Cup points event too, right? Mm -hmm. So the, I would think quite a few of the Europeans would be here that the uh, so that makes for a better event for sure. And Matthew was doing some great things for the sport. Yeah, and hats off to all, you know, the promoters outside of Matchroom that's working uh, with Matchroom with some of these smaller qualifying. And they're still not small. They're still great events. But um, you know, a lot of hard work, a lot of communication. All right, there's that spin. Oh, my. He's all gonna, that spin. Yeah. He's going to get the five to the pocket. The seven's not going to help. Maybe it's close. A one-three combo. I think he should shoot if he can get at it. Yeah, I mean, we're set up to have perhaps what will ultimately be the longest running really pro tour that we've had in 20 years if yeah. this continues and the rate we're going. Yeah, I think the way they're doing it, it's it's kind of set up to grow and become even bigger and better. Oh, absolutely, so. yeah. There, I mean, there's a lot of models out there and they're taking little things here and there. And, of course, they have a ton of experience with with other disciplines and pool and other sports. So, yeah, you know, they, it's one good thing is they have a, a few of those growing pains that they've already gone through. And, uh, and they, and again, the connections, of course, uh, you know, anytime you do business with people and they're happy, of course, that opens doors for more business. And I have implicit faith in Barry Hearn. If he wants something, he can make it happen. Well, that word you use right there, he does want it. Uh, he really does. In 1994, the very first Moscone Cup, he called up Sky TV and said, look, we don't do tape, so it's going to be aired live four nights, and they did it. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and before the first ball of the first 94 Moscone Cup was ever struck, the promoter had made a profit. I mean, that's pretty classy. Yeah. Normally you got to invest in some type of thing and wait, wait, wait. Not Barry Hearn. He makes things happen. Yeah, they're, of course, the Moscone does real well. But the other events, they're pretty invested heavily in, in trying to make it grow, and it's not a big profitable thing at the moment. But we all hope it is for them. That means it'll continue to grow on the player's end. Well, just the energy that came out of Vietnam is a nuclear. I mean, that's unbelievable. Yeah, it was great. There. It was that's great. But, I mean, I think the players realize, you know, one thing about it, they don't. They don't. Of course, the person who wins the tournament is going to get most of the glory and most of the media, and as they should. And whoever's highly ranked gets a little more attention. But they really market and build all the players. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, they want the the fans to know the players on tour, and they put forth the effort to do so. You know, for that to happen. Which, if you run tournaments, it's great to have the best, but. You know, if all the players are popular, that's really the goal. Slinsky getting in that rhythm. Trying to get back to a three-game lead. Okay, nice smooth out there. Corey maybe didn't have enough of that shot that he could see it, or perhaps uh, we tried to do too much with the cue ball, or perhaps it was a combination that is just missable. So. Yeah, I think it was missable, but I think he definitely did the right thing. Got to attack there. Take your chances if you can knock it, knock it in. You're the one, you know, moving a beat on your side. Pretty high TPA for Zelensky at the moment, 938. <laughs> with four errors. Yeah, 938, that'll get it. Yeah, it's breaking TPA. A little lower, but I mean, you got to... It's, well, it's, it's been a tough breaking table today anyways. That's three out of four. That's yeah, not bad. Not bad.
eight ball tracking. It's going to go a little long. He got the one down. Oh, He's yeah. going to get a window at the two as well. Or it's really close. Looks like he has it. Maybe a safety. Banking the two and holding him behind the five somewhat. But One thing here is that left English, if he thinks he can get at it, doesn't quite throw the balls well on the slick felt. Doesn't grab quite as much. I think you're going to see him. Play, yeah, play he, the two, you know, and play safe, right? No, he just pointed where he, so he's not got enough to play the ball. Apparently. Yeah, that's what I mean. Bank it down. It's got to go though a little bit. I think he did pretty good. Yeah, really nice. That was a quality shot there. Good judgment. Uh, pretty savvy. That's not an easy two cushion bank on the two and then control the cue ball. If you're really good at the kick and stick, you can hit just past the side with low and try and hit the two one rail. If you go two rails here, you may not get a cushion if the two goes right into the three. If you top spin at two cushions, though, you can stick at two uh, if you hit it thick. Well, two came just enough, and you're going to see Zelensky attack, I believe. Can't get at the low left part of the cue ball. Maybe go at the eight one rail. May just cut it in with inside and come back and forth along the head string and take the long shot on the three. I don't think it's so easy to come back and forth with inside, though. No, so, and he was billiarding, and he was looking at billiarding the nine here with the cue ball. I think you got to dig on this with outside and come back. You were right. Yeah. He even overcut that a little bit and got around it. Just too much clear on that end, along with the three being down there, of course, but. I think now he can hit a high ball and get to the short rail and come two rails underneath the eight, or inside the ten, rather, underneath the eight. Kind of hit the points or something happened weird there. It yeah. took a lot of pace out of the cue ball. I don't know. I don't know if he just underhit it or what, but it did act a little funny near the corner of the cue ball. Is he going to go for this cut, huh? Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't know. He's winding up like he thinks he can cut it in. Oh, what a pretty shot. What a pretty shot. Nice recovery. Now, this is one of my worst shots, even though it's a simple one. It's going forward and across but not too much forward because you don't want to catch the seven and coming across. You don't want to catch the nine. Could bleed mm -hmm. the cue ball in the corner off of one of those balls. It's just a funny shot to me mm -hmm. where you can't get to the short rail, but you still got to come across. And it's not super tough. To me, it's just odd. We well, made that look easy. Nice. Yep, he's going to measure up just to roll the head just a little bit. I'll tell you, I was thinking about different players you were talking about showing up in them. Have we ever had the Co brothers here at the Derby? I don't know if we ever I don't have. recall it if we had. I think they would have an absolute ball here at this event. Seven three is our score. Stinson's leading out of four games over Google. It's seven games to three. Zelensky, he really reminds me of like uh, Fast Eddie in the first movie, The Hustler. You know what I mean? He's yeah. kind of fast and loose. He, he got that confident, like, 
How much am I going to win tonight, Charlie? Yeah. How much? Yeah, right. Ten just, grand? Yeah, ten grand. <laughs> yeah, that type of. <laughs> I just watched that again the, about uh, uh, two a week and a half, two weeks ago. I, guess. I, I watch it every New Year's Eve. Okay. Every New Year's Eve, just like a tradition, like we always. It might watch have it. been New Year's. No, nah, it wasn't New Year's yeah. Eve when I watched it, but it wasn't long ago, a week or two. Yeah. How much am I going to win? <laughs> yeah, what a sad. What I mean, that's a that's a real tearjerker of a movie, though. I will tell you. Look at the actors in there. You got Piper Laurie. You yeah. got George C. Scott. You got Newman. Uh, yeah. Jackie Gleason. Jackie Gleason. Yeah. yeah. Three and the eight, right behind the one. Three and the four, sorry. And no dry break. Yeah, and the, the funny thing is, Corey a lot of times will break off the end rail, of course not smashing them, but he seems so much more solid and can hit them with more pace. I've mm -hmm. seen that end rail break from him playing 10 ball, and he's won the tournament before uh, breaking that way. So I don't see much difference as far as the hit and stability than the bridge versus the end rail, even though it's a 10-footer. But uh. Can he make this ball? Has he got to chip it and run safe? I think he's got to I chip don't think it. He can, yeah, I don't think he can make it. And I think you know, it's a pretty narrow gap there, too. So. Oh, he's pushing. So he, he doesn't even like getting at it at all. I guess he can't get at it, but maybe where it's selling out. Yeah, this is a, <laughs> it's an off-angle combination, and I think Zelensky will shoot the three, and I think Corey feels it, so I think Corey's going to go ahead and shoot the three. Super long bridge here, so I guess he's not shooting at it. Yeah, I think he is. Is he? I was about oh, to say, yeah. watch out for trying. the cue ball going cross corner. I was just about to mention that, especially him just leveling out there. Yeah, you would think if you're going to do that, you almost have to apply inside spin or something. Just or to, outside. Or Either you, one, yeah. But anything, you just, just can't go directly into the drink. Yeah. Because he didn't hit it that bad, so it wasn't like he grotesquely mishit the object ball, and that's why it went there. It was just going there all the time. Yeah, and that uh, Zelensky's going to try and set up for an angle on the two to be able to go into the four or five. Or the five. That's good. Doesn't have to move the four. He'd prefer to move the four a little bit, but as long as he dislodges the five or makes the five. Now, the problem is he didn't get much angle, or he's got a lot of angle, I mean, but he's, he can't hit it with a lot of speed, so he may get kind of flat here. Ooh, wow. Didn't expect that. <laughs> and that's all just missing the position there. On the first shot, the idea was nice, but the you know probably when he got funny on it, he probably should have rethought that one. Yeah, it would have been hard to pass up that breakout though. It's a, yeah. right, but he couldn't go in there with the control. He was playing yeah, out. yeah, yeah, problem, yeah. Maybe you know. think, oh, what's going to happen if I hit it here? Yeah, you're absolutely right, Mark. Because this is right now the only way that Corey can win is if Zelensky makes unforced errors. If we just gunfight and. Even if you don't like the four, just play safe on the four. Yeah, well, he Which, didn't get the shape he wanted there. He was a little afraid of getting too much angle. Now he got on top of it. It's going to play the bank, I think. Good shot. Good shot. You always hate it when you have ball in hand and the very next shot you have to bank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know you did something wrong. He's not so straight he can't go forward. So watch out. Easy to overcut this. Beautiful. Good hit. Good shot, Corey. Yeah, he got a lot more angle on the side than he wanted. 
definitely want it angled. Yeah, but uh, enough that we may go in the corner here. Yeah, the absolutely. cue ball's going to be so hot if you can go in the side. Yeah, he can check it, though. He can draw it and hit pass, pass the side with a little low and a hair of outside English. But it is missable. Good shot. Now he's back in line. Now he's coming across the position zone, so you have to have good speed control here. That looks great. Seven four. Good run out there. Yeah, I mean seven four it seems like Corey's kinda out of it, but he's shooting eight seventy eight right there at eight eighty, so just needs to turn the break around a little bit, maybe a little help from mm -hmm. from Victor, but Seems like Victor's pretty tuned in on the break as well. Difficult task, but Corey Duell's done it before. We'll see if he can do it again. Ball was going to get what looked like a real close shot on the one. Should mm -hmm. still attack. And the two does go between the three and four. Can he hit this and get into the nine to try and hold shape? Otherwise, this could be tricky. This Straight shooter. Straight shooter. Pretty shot now. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it goes. Okay. Definitely goes. I wouldn't say he's got the entire pocket, but I think he's got a pretty big portion of it. He's not going to roll it. He's going to dig on it. Smart. Good shot. Now he's got to start making a decision, which I think he's perfect to get above the four to come around the nine, maybe to play the five in the side because it does not pass the six. Yeah. That's yeah, that's looking at yeah. get up there. I don't know if we got a chance to grab the overhead real quick, but just let's see what Jeremy's saying is up here and get the. Oh, where's my thing? Now it's gone. Okay. Well, he didn't get up there, so never mind on the overhead. What happened to that thing? Oh, okay. He's going to draw the cue ball, I guess, up under. He's actually gotten perfect for that. It's not quite as natural, of course. He's got to get into the cue ball, so speed control a little more demanding. Overdid it? Yeah, he's going he's gonna to rely on his ball pocketing here. Whew. Whew. What, a, what a tough <laughs> shot this is. Oh, boy. And this, this is where he's better. Sorry, uh, this, mentally. This yeah. stemmed from not getting where you said he should have on the, been on because the, yeah. you can still, even if you fall funny, you can do something. But well, you're never going to end up on the rail here. You may sure. end up a little off, but it's never going to be that bad, probably. But exactly. this is where he's gotten better mentally. Even if he misses this, but he wasn't frowning. He was dealing with it. You know, before he would really be like turning his head. That's got to need some help. Tell you, gets out here, seven five, breaking the balls in game number thirteen.
pretty ideal here. And use the rail here, just kind of stun towards the nine, like that, making sure you can reach it. Uh -oh. Look out! Look out! Trouble! <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> that scared me. I'm not afraid of anything either. So. Five behind. Battling. Breaking in the next. Love to see him break off the end rail. Yeah, that would, that really would be a nice adjustment. Yeah. I know he is. You know, some call it crazy on the nine footer to break off that end rail, but, it, you know, he stays solid. He can put a little more speed. He repeats it a lot. And I think he could do the same here, even on the ten footer. Square hit there. Yeah, still had a little left spin, but much, much better. Good yeah. ball action. Yeah, a little, a little less spin overall, and really nice hit on the one. Nice spread. Buries this one ball. He should put some heat on Victor. Now he's got, he's got some work. Four to the five's not going to be easy. He's got to get pretty good on the two to get nice on the four to make the five a little easier. But if he ends up short on the five. Could be a little work getting from the five to the six to the seven. But first things first is all about this one ball. Good shot. Yeah, he's falling mm -hmm. around. He's a little, a little flat, too. Yeah, he caught the one a little thick to the pocket, so got a little more draw out of it. May have to elevate this to punch just a hair. Can't afford the angle from the middle of the table. It doesn't look like anyways. Didn't try to do too much. That was pretty good. Well, he actually got just kind of perfect for being this far to where he can go forward dodging the 10 and the 7 and come down. Now he could unleash the draw stroke as well. Chalking up like he wants to draw it. He made one of the most dynamic draw strokes in the competition I ever saw in the Moscone Cup. You know the shot I'm talking about? I was there. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Golly. It was a mass A, really. And, and more than well, that one, too, where he pushed out, you're talking about. I'm talking about the other one where it was kind of whipped it down there. and, and That was did. at the U.S. Open. That oh, was, was it? Yeah, it wasn't. At the, oh. Yeah, he kicked the ball in prior and then got funny, and uh, he warped it in. I think it was the four ball and made the ball hook on the TV table there. Oh, he's overcut this one and lost the cue ball. A little d -cell there on the stroke, a little let up. Corey. I mean, he's just a, a, like an enigma of odd things. Uh, his first big tournament win, Strickland Corey Duell in Milwaukee, Camel Tour, and Strickland was ahead and got mad over the rack and 
just walked out and forfeit. I mean, who wins a major tournament? <laughs> Corey Duell does. Yeah, I was uh, kind of hot about that. Not hot, but um, he. I played him in the final of the Camel t Series in 99 in the first tournament in Olathe. He didn't walk out on me. He just absolutely hijacked me early in the, uh, in the final. And then I got to see this a, a, a few months later whenever Corey played him. Of course, I was young and trying to figure out things. but Yeah, we all were. That was a great tour, though. Yeah, and, you know, that was a great tournament. Uh, I think that was the one to Dance and Bear ran like 10 racks and out uh, in one of the matches. <laughs> yeah, the Dancing Bear. Love that guy. Really always like What is it, like Lon. Martin? Elaine Martell. Elaine Martell, yeah. Still does quite a bit of teaching and stuff up there in Canada. Really stayed steady there. Nice Boy, shot. Yeah. It's close if he can get by the 10. With a high ball. He's going to soft draw into it. Hmm. All right. Nice shot. Eight to five is their score. That was a pretty big turnaround there. Important rack. Looks like the players are going to take a unchar well, charge timeout actually. Okay, uh, the players are back. Eight to five is our score. And Zelensky to break the balls here in rack number 14. Well, what a huge rack. Corey had a chance there, overcut the five to get it to 7-6. Really one of his best breaks of, of the match. Really only had two good breaks of the match, I would, mm -hmm. would say. I mean, one break and run out. That one could have been. Six and eight right behind the one. Two and three on the wing. Well, that's six. the squares you can hit them. I'm Boy, sorry, Mark. Both the six and the eight went right on in there. With and with speed, though. They did dribble, right? I mean, they had a little more pace than we've seen all day. Cue ball dead in the center of the table. Now he's got a shot that he's really good at. Kind of coming twice back and forth to the center of the table. I don't think he tries to. Go by the five. I don't see the point there. Withdrawal. Really good at that light stun coming across two rails. So. And the three's near, so you can handle a little bit on the two. You don't have to get perfect. This will be a pretty shot. He looks like he's digging down. Oh, no. Yeah, he, oh, how's his yeah. speed? I think it's too much. No. No, it's really good. Whew. That's the beautiful oh, wow. thing about that shot. If you understand and you make good strokes, it kind of not only releases, but also takes some speed off as well. Meaning releasing, it doesn't yeah. come very tight. It always opens up a little bit. No, very good. Very good shot. World-class shot. But it came out. I thought it was hot, but no, it was perfect. Yeah, and the key is not let up either. You know, you're a big fan of Buddy Hall. So am I. But he always made a, a, a bouncy table. And this isn't bouncy by any means, but. What I'm getting at is he can control the cute, the rail speed a little bit with that stroke he had. You know, he, mm -hmm. he never poked at the ball. And mm -hmm. anytime you carry rotation into the cue ball, that's what kind of makes it, yeah. look, you know, settle a little bit and grab a little bit to where it doesn't boing. What happens is when you get on a boingy table, you start letting up on the stroke a little bit. And that's when it starts to actually boing more because you're not carrying that rotation into the rail with yeah. the cue ball. So 
boy, his stroke, it was mesmerizing. I would just sit there fascinated the whole time. Just, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. You well, know? he make a wet table look dry as a bone. And if you understood that, you know, realize how big of an advantage you have over your opponent. Uh, I just got to come one rail between the 710 here. I don't think I force it at all. There's a hair of right English is all needed. No reason to come back or forward with inside. Not in my opinion, anyways. Good chat. Like that. Really hard to go wrong. Yeah, those were the days. And uh, the players, Buddy Hall and Mike Siegel, didn't play as well as these guys do today. But they would if they would have had this level of competition to play against. They set the standard back then of what yeah. it was. But if yeah. you think they'd be second rate today, you got another thing coming. No, the only thing they, you know, they would change a little bit as far as the physical side of things. You know, a little more of the training off the table, maybe, like mm -hmm. these guys do. But I'll tell you, I, 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 you know, I didn't really see many players maybe shot a little straighter, but get through the rack any better than, than Buddy Hall. Now, Siegel, I had a lot of tapes, but I never really got to see him play a ton in person. A few times here and mm -hmm. there, but he wasn't in his prime. But, yeah, champions of yesteryear, I think, would have been champions today. Oh, my. Well, you know Nick Varner. He wouldn't settle for being second fiddle here. No, you no, know, There's yeah. no way. Big turnover here. Yeah, 8-6 and... Being able to break the balls in the next game is a possibility. Yeah, it all stemmed when he got a little flat on that ball after he clipped that seven coming down table. He didn't like it. He expressed it with his body language and then Sure as heck. Ended up costing him. Corey got a lot more out of that cue ball than he expected. A little closer to the side than he probably wanted. But now ends up pretty perfect. Oh, my. No, it's almost like he moved his bridge hand as he delivered that. I agree. I totally agree. It was weird. I was watching it, and I assumed that that was going down, and I was watching. I, I do notice sometimes he bridges kind of up on his fingertips. Yeah, he something. doesn't use the palm as much as most. You know, that 1,000 pounds underneath your palm is a pretty good support. So, a big shot here. Well, awkward bridge. It's that mid-range. You don't know mm -hmm. whether to put your bridge hand down. It's too short. If you put it on the rail, it's pretty long. So. That weird spot. This won't be slow rolled. Pretty shot. Ooh. Boy, a couple turnarounds there. Yeah, the overcut on the five just two games ago, or last game. Now getting to the table to cut that lead and made a big mistake there. So I don't know if it'll be the last time or not. But does break the balls again, maybe with the bridge for the last time in this big foot. <laughs> we'll see. Seen that bridge before, Corey Duell. Kind of. I never use the word hustled because I just don't believe in it too, too much. I mean, there is some of it, right? But he beat a friend of mine out of quite a bit of money one time, getting a decent little handicap playing one pocket against him, using the bridge every shot. And of course, once he started to. To his exhibition with the bridge, we kind of, we kind of figured out, or at least I figured out, it was way too big of a handicap mm -hmm. the way he used the bridge. So, all right. Oh yeah, then he gets the stroke with the bridge. You Look, know, no bridge. Bother. Don't tell. Oh, okay. <laughs> About to say he just broke perfect with it, and uh, gonna leave it alone. Made the ball on the side. Cue ball trickled forward on him. I don't think he has much that he could do offensively. Yeah, if he can cue the ball at all, I think you'll see him go for the long rail bank here. 
maybe I'll play perfect just to kind of slow stun the cue ball towards the eight a little bit, kind of slowly, and mm -hmm. play for a little cover other than hanging the one. But I think he's got to go for the bank here. Stiffed it nicely. A little English. Just With lay inside over the spin, side twirl. It was a pretty nice shot. Pretty nifty. Yeah, I think he was forced just the way he could cue the ball there to hit yeah. it with a little inside. And, yeah. And sometimes you'll make sure you're hitting it with what you have available so you don't foul the ball that you're yeah. next to. You know, you don't yeah. come across it or something like that. So Now, this is where the big man and the big stroke helps. He could shove this ball in, elevate in here, and kind of kind of force it in that side pocket, I think. Mm. Uh -huh. Beastly shot. We'll see if he levels out. If he levels out, he might be cross cross side. He was playing safe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Didn't get anywhere near where he wanted. He wanted to tuck the cue ball in behind. I know what he wanted to do, but what the cue ball wanted to do when it goes across that one was not go into the 710. Yeah, never. So he imagined one thing, but the reality was quite another. I thought the bank was a little safe because if you mm -hmm. track the cue ball for shape, the one's going to be out in space if you miss it, right? Yeah. So. Good shot, Corey. Mm -mm, they're real good. Really good. <laughs> Corey. Hanging around. Four, five, six, seven, seven, ten combo maybe to win it. Hard to tie a ball up here. So I think he's just got to. Can he kick by the six, two rails? Hidden? Can he straighten the cue ball out a little bit? I don't know if it wants to take here, really. Yeah, especially if you get a high ball on here. Oh, that's a nice hit. Really good. Still needs a rail, though. I think it'll get there. And safe. Pink. Pink. Right what a shot. Hand. Just the last couple inches there. Now, as he come across this lightly, trying to go behind the five, knowing the eight's there, hard to give up a clear shot, just a combination maybe. If he does let it get away. Boy, what a nice hit. Went with the kick and was trying to stick the cue ball. Got it just a hair thin, but didn't uh, didn't leave much. One behind the seven ten cue ball behind the six. Real simple. Got to kick this way. That way you're kicking towards congestion with the cue ball. You hope the cue ball at medium speed kind of follows downward as maybe the one goes back up table. Maybe make it. Uh, he caught it thin, so he's going to need a little help to get safe. Watch out, 10 ball, as he tries to rifle this one in <laughs> and maybe get some shape. Looks like a high ball. He can catch the 10 kind of nice and, and come one rail between the 6 9, maybe. I don't know. With that uh, angle, it nine, feels nine. like it's going to hit the 9 if you yeah. make the 1. You'd have to overcut the 1, I think, to just get purely at the 10. Oh, you're absolutely right. I'm looking at the table itself instead of the monitor there. And but the monitor is deceptive, just so you know. Yeah. So. Okay. He's going to wait one more turn, displaying what Mark Wilson didn't have when he was 18, patience. Well, you know, a lot or, more value with no jump cue. Yeah. Good judgment. Man, this is tough, isn't it? How can he hit it going this way? Do I see? Am I missing something here? Two rails. Oh, he got, yeah. Oh, he tried to get two rails at the inside. Ugh. Yeah, I thought that was going to be hard maybe with the slick table, but. Definitely a 7-10 combo. It's probably going to end this match. A 1-8 combo to get this run started. Don't have to worry about anything. You can always play position off the one. There's no bad angle here unless you get too thin. You got to kill the rock here, Mark. He put a lot more speed in that combo than I anticipated. Yeah. Double. Double yeah. the speed that yeah. it needed. Well, he 
he's not so tired at the late hour like we are, Mark. <laughs> you know, uh, it's kind of Zelensky plays a little bit of Rodney Morris style where he's better off. He's a little out of line. <laughs> you get rocking in line. It's hard for him to get out. But if he has to make a couple trick shots, he's out. Well, I talk mm. about it all the time in commentary to, you know, especially when the nerves are high. Yeah. It's not the worst thing in the world to have to recover on a few shots early knowing and just kind of settles you in knowing I can do that. You know, instead of worrying about being a little yeah. out of line, you know, you, you bury a couple of nice little shots. They don't have to be like barn burners or anything, but just, you know, a little out of line here and there. And yeah. you start to get a little more flow, it seems. I mean, that last 10 ball that Zelensky made, that was, that was super good. Got to hit it all for pure. All right. No ifs, ands, and buts. The seven tens laying there, so don't try to manufacture anything. Just get a nice angle on the six to come back behind that combo. Oh, you got way too much angle, maybe. This has got to go a little bit. I think he's good. Yeah, he's all right. And the funny thing is, you look at, at Victor, right? He probably grew up thinking call shot 10 ball was how it was originated, mm -hmm. you know, because of his age, right? And so. Right. Match ball. It's not a gimme. The combinations are very missable, and this is a 5 by 10, but pretty good scoring chance. And great job there. Entertaining match. Well, we will sincerely thank everyone for joining us at AccuStats Video Productions, the worldwide leader in billiard programming. Please join us again. This concludes our broadcast day, and so long for just a while.